Today we're introducing radiative equilibrium model of the atmosphere uh, and the Earth system. In this uh, radiative equilibrium model, uh, we have the top of the atmosphere denoted up here. We have this layer of atmosphere, so we're going to have a one layer atmosphere. And then we have the ground down here at the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to track the radiation as it comes from the sun into the Earth atmosphere system. Uh, and then we will look at the long wave radiation uh, as it escapes from our planet. So starting off at the beginning, uh, the radiation that comes into the uh, Earth system is pi r squared, which is the uh, area of our disk when viewed from the sun, times s, which is the solar constant. <coughs> that's the amount of radiation that's incident on the top of the atmosphere. But in this model, we have a reflectivity of the atmosphere, RAS, uh, so some of that uh, energy is going to be reflected from the top of the atmosphere, uh, that amount being RAS times pi r squared s. The atmosphere in this case does have an absorption component in the short wave. And by the short wave, I basically mean the ultraviolet, the visible, and the near infrared that comes from the sun. We have an, absorb an absorptivity of the atmosphere, uh, A, AS, uh, which will be multiplied times the amount of radiation that was uh, not reflected off of the atmosphere, 1 minus RAS, times the amount of radiation that was incident at the top of the atmosphere, pi r squared s. The amount of radiation that uh, passes through the atmosphere is then given by this quantity. And when that radiation hits the ground, in this case, we have a ground that is not a black body. It is going to be partially reflective. Uh, and it has a reflectivity RGS, uh, reflectivity of the ground in the short wave. And so the amount of radiation that is reflected from the ground is the uh, reflectivity of the ground times the amount of radiation that was incident upon the ground. And the amount of radiation that actually makes it to be absorbed by the ground is whatever was not uh, reflected from the ground, 1 minus RGS times the amount of radiation that was incident upon the ground. But this reflected radiation passes back through the atmosphere and some of it will be absorbed as it passes through the atmosphere. Uh, the amount that's absorbed is the uh, absorptivity of the atmosphere in the short wave, AAS, times the amount of radiation that was incident upon the atmosphere. And then some of that will make it through to the top of the atmosphere and escape the system altogether. And that is just going to be the uh, 1 minus the AAS squared times 1 minus RAS times RGS times pi r squared s. So what we've done is we tracked the incoming solar radiation as it was reflected from the atmosphere, absorbed in the atmosphere, reflected off the ground, absorbed by the ground, absorbed by the atmosphere, and then transmitted back to space. We have ignored multiple reflections off of the atmosphere uh, back and forth uh, just to simplify the problem. Over here on the right hand side, we have the long wave radiation, which is primarily the far infrared. Uh, everything, every object that is, has a temperature above absolute zero is emitting energy, uh, and that radiation that's being emitted from that object is controlled by the Stefan Boltzmann law. Uh, so the amount of radiation that's being emitted by the ground, for example, is uh, sigma uh, t to the ground to the fourth power. And the area that is emitting on our planet is the entire surface area of the planet. So uh, 4 pi r squared is the surface area of the sphere. So the total amount of energy that's being emitted by the Earth's surface is 4 pi r squared times sigma, which is the stuff on Boltzmann constant, times the temperature of the ground to the fourth power. But the atmosphere is also emitting radiation. Um, and it'll emit at a different rate because the temperature of the atmosphere and the temperature of the ground in this model uh, are not necessarily the same. And so the amount of radiation that's being emitted by the atmosphere is 4 pi r squared times sigma times temperature of the atmosphere to the fourth power. And it's being emitted uh, from this elevated atmosphere both towards the Earth's surface and towards space. The concept of radiative equilibrium is relatively simple. It's a, a bookkeeping exercise. The total amount of incoming radiation at a certain surface is equal to the amount of outgoing radiation at that surface. 
Or, alternatively, you could say that the amount of radiation that's absorbed within a layer is equal to the amount of radiation that's emitted at that same layer. And to put that into perspective, for the atmosphere, we have three absorption terms. We have the direct solar that was absorbed in the atmosphere. We have the solar radiation that was reflected off the Earth's surface that's absorbed in the atmosphere, term number one and term number two. And term number three is the amount of radiation that's absorbed by the atmosphere uh, that was emanating from the ground. So those are the three absorption terms for the atmosphere. And the emission term for the atmosphere is simply term number four, uh, four pi r squared sigma ta to the fourth. Absorption equals emission for the atmosphere. For the ground, we have two uh, absorption quantities. We have the direct absorption of solar radiation here, and we have the absorption of the long wave radiation that comes from the atmosphere. Those are the two absorption terms. The emission term is simply the 4 pi r squared sigma t to the ground, t of the ground to the fourth power. So absorption equals emission. So we have different parameters uh, in this model. <coughs> we have the reflectivity of the atmosphere in the short wave. And in this particular model, I've set it to be 0.3. Uh, so 30% of the incoming solar radiation is reflected from this uh, planet. Uh, the absorb absorptivity of the atmosphere in the short wave is set to be 0.05, which is relatively low, uh, because the atmosphere is primarily transparent to the visible and uh, parts of the near-infrared, uh, but it does absorb in the UV. So that's primarily being absorbed by ultraviolet radiation. The ultraviolet radiation is being absorbed by ozone and oxygen in the atmosphere. The reflectivity of the ground in the short wave, I've set to be 0.1. Uh, that is a relatively low reflectivity, um, not much dissimilar from what we would expect for an ocean. Uh, the oceanic uh, albedo is just slightly lower than that. And then we have an absorptivity for the atmosphere in the long wave, which I've set to be 0.5. Uh, the absorptivity of the atmosphere is controlled uh, in large part by the fraction of the planet that's covered by clouds and the uh, water vapor that happens to be in the atmosphere. And then we have our solar constant of 1360 watts per meter squared. <clears throat> we can define the albedo of this system as the outgoing shortwave radiation at the top of the atmosphere divided by the incoming shortwave radiation uh, at the top of the atmosphere. And for this model, the incoming solar radiation, excuse me, the outgoing shortwave radiation is two streams. Uh, that which is directly reflected from the atmosphere, RAS pi r squared s, and that which is reflected from the ground passes through the atmosphere and then exits the top of the atmosphere, the second term. The total amount of incoming shortwave radiation is pi r squared s. You'll notice that pi r squared s it shows in all three terms, so you can just eliminate that. And so the albedo in this simple model is just the reflectivity of the atmosphere uh, plus this additional term, which is the reflected radiation from the ground that made it to the top of the atmosphere. Using these parameters over here, uh, the reflectivity of the atmosphere is the 0.3 and the other terms uh, give you an additional 6.3%. Uh, so the entire albedo for this planet uh, is uh, 0.363, so 36%, which is slightly higher than that of the Earth. Uh, the albedo of the Earth is approximately um, 0.3. <clears throat> the radiative equilibrium equations that we have right here for the atmosphere and for the ground, we have two equations. And if we define all these parameters, we have two equations and two unknowns. Uh, the unknowns would be the temperature of the atmosphere and the temperature for the ground. So <clears throat> by taking part of this equation with the temperature of the ground uh, and substituting it into the temperature of the, uh, the rate of the equilibrium uh, for the atmosphere, uh, you can actually reduce the dimensionality to uh, one equation with one unknown. And if you do that, uh, you essentially have the temperature of the atmosphere is reflected by this long equation, which is essentially 
Um, the <clears throat> amount of radiation that was absorbed uh, in the atmosphere, the amount of shortwave radiation which was absorbed uh, from the reflected uh, radiation from the ground, and then we have the absorptivity of the atmosphere uh, up here in, the, in this term right here. Uh, and all of that's going to be divided by this term right here. And it's to the one fourth power. And if we plug in our numbers from this model the way I have it set up, uh, you'll end up with this expression here uh, in terms of the numeric values. And for this simplified model of the one layer atmosphere, uh, we'll end up with a temperature for the atmosphere of 252 degrees Kelvin, which is minus 20.9 degrees C. If you, once you know the temperature of the atmosphere, you can put that into the equation for the radiative equilibrium equation for the temperature of the ground, and then you can solve directly for the temperature of the ground. Uh, so uh, temperature of the ground uh, has to do with the amount of radiation that was absorbed at the ground plus the amount of radiation which was uh, absorbed from the atmosphere. And now we know the temperature of the atmosphere so we can explicitly put that in there. Um, divide by four sigma. Raise it all to the one fourth power, and you'll end up with a temperature at the ground for the simplified model of 295 Kelvin or 22.3 degrees C. If we look at the contributing factors for the atmosphere, uh, term number one is the direct absorption of shortwave radiation from the sunlight. And in this particular model, that gives you about uh, a numeric value of 47. Um, and the second part, uh, term number two, is the absorption of radiation that was reflected from the ground. It's uh, less than one-tenth uh, of that of that was incident upon the ground, or, or that was absorbed in the atmosphere. And the largest component of this is actually uh, term number three, which is the absorption of the long wave radiation that was emitted by the ground. If you take a look at the temperature of the ground, um, it's basically being controlled by two terms. Term number five, uh, which is the uh, direct absorption of the incoming solar radiation at the ground, and this equates about 813, and the absorption of the radiation from the atmosphere, and this case is the dominant term of 919. And so the temperature at the ground, if you uh, had no atmosphere or an atmosphere with essentially no absorptivity, uh, then the ground would be much colder. And the function of the atmosphere, because of the greenhouse gases and the non-zero uh, absorptivity of the atmosphere at the long wave, is to warm the Earth's surface. And so here we've just constructed this simplistic one-layer model of the atmosphere. But uh, in reality, uh, it's possible to create uh, multiple layers in a model such as this and solve for the rate of equilibrium equations for each one of those layers. And if you do this with a, a computer algorithm, you can actually set up an infinite number of layers uh, in your atmosphere. And at that point, you can solve for the temperature structure of the atmosphere, uh, as you can see how much heating and cooling there is in each individual layer. And so what I've laid out here is a very rudimentary uh, uh, method that can be scaled up uh, in uh, using computer programs in order to make this a, a much more robust and much more accurate solution for the rate of equilibrium for the atmosphere.